السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه وبعد All praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon the masterpiece Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him and to bless all his companions To bless all the messengers whom Allah has sent to mankind and to bless all of us who are seated here this evening, those who are listening, to bless every single human being. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all guidance and guide us to the straight path. Ameen. Honored ulama, beloved brothers and sisters and dearest listeners, everyone fears oppression. And at the same time, nobody would like to be categorized as an oppressor. So neither would we like to oppress, nor would we like to be oppressed. We need to know what the Quran says about oppression. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken very clearly about the various types of oppression and which deeds constitute oppression. The first thing I'd like to do tonight is to make mention the meaning of the term oppression. If you were to open the Arabic language, the dictionary of the Arabic language, you would find it says وَضْعُ الشَّيْءِ فِي غَيْرِ مَحَلِّهِ أَوْ فِي غَيْرِ مَكَانِهِ To put something in a place that does not belong to it. So if someone were to try and wear a shoe on the hand, that's oppression, because they are putting it on the wrong place. So to put something where it does not belong, that constitutes oppression. However, there are two main types of oppression when it comes to the Sharia, ah, when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's explanation. The first is that oppression where another individual is not involved. It is a person himself who oppresses by engaging in a major sin, in something big, some extreme sin, something that is serious and severe that is known as oppression. In that case, the Quran refers to it as oppressing oneself. Though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is involved, when a person, for example, eats interest, it is considered oppression. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is involved. In fact, when it comes to interest, I might be wrong. There might even be a third party involved. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. When it comes to a sin such as shirk, associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if the person or the being or the creature who is being associated as a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a party to that partnership, then there is only one person involved and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being sinned against. But if the person who is being associated as a partner with Allah or the creature is involved, then there is more than one person. It becomes oppression of two or three different types. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and we ask him to make us not from amongst the oppressors. I mean, this having been said, we need to know when a person oppresses where only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is involved by committing a sin, they've oppressed themselves. Allah says he will forgive them if they seek forgiveness. If you repent to Allah, you confess your sin to the creator himself and you promise him not to do it again. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he will forgive you. But where there is another party involved, and that is the second type of oppression, where you are oppressing a fellow human being, whether you are oppressing your wife, whether you are oppressing your children, your family members, your parents, and your relatives, or your business partners, those who work for you, those whom you are working for, if you are oppressing another person, that is a bigger crime. It is a major, major sin, and it is something that there is no guarantee you are going to be forgiven for we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection why is there no guarantee because the minute a third party is involved Allah says I step out of the picture it is between you and them if you have wronged someone for example backbiting is great oppression if you have backbitten about someone or gossiped about them you will have to go to them to seek forgiveness you have no way out besides that Allahu Akbar you will have to go to the individual you have deceived or you have cheated and you will have to say forgive me i have wronged you if they don't want to know details and they say you are forgiven it's okay but if they don't want to forgive you it is their right i've mentioned a few days back 
that some people think that by doing a good deed on their behalf or by reading a few du'as, you will be forgiven for backbiting. That is incorrect and invalid. Let me quickly explain to you what happens there. Some of the ulama have suggested, and it's just a suggestion, there's no guarantee, that if you go to someone and you seek forgiveness for having backbitten them or oppressed them and they do not forgive you, then there may just be one way that might help you if you do good deeds on their behalf. On the day of judgment, when they want justice, they will see two things from you. One is the oppression and the other is a good deed that you did on their behalf. And then they may just feel at that moment to forgive you. That is why we say do good deeds or make dua for them and so on. But remember, there is no guarantee that you will be forgiven if you have oppressed an individual. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. It is a very big misunderstanding to think that without going to them, you are forgiven. And this is why one is it is easy for someone to say, listen, brother, you have backbitten about me. I forgive you. That's quite easy. But the damage that is caused by that backbiting, that rumor spreading, that deception, it now becomes the duty of the individual who created that gossip and rumor and backbiting and so on to go back and unwind what he wound. So if someone forgives you, it is still your duty then to go back to every person you went to and tell them, look, I told you this, it is incorrect, it is invalid. And please, can you go to whoever else you told and tell them that it is invalid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. What is the worst oppression mentioned in the Quran? The worst and the greatest oppression, the greatest sin that is known as zulm in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Luqman, Indeed, associating partners with Allah is the biggest crime you could ever commit. And I'm sure this is repeating itself every day. All the angles that the Quran discusses this topic are amazing. It discusses this topic almost every time. The topic of association of partnership with Allah. Every time a sin is mentioned, this is also mentioned. And Allah warns us about it. Because sometimes people are associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without realizing. Sometimes they realize it, but their arrogance leads them to deny. Sometimes they defy. Sometimes they argue and debate saying that we are not associating partners. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from this biggest crime that shaitan has promised that he is going to try with every one of us to do that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from shaitan and keep shaitan away from us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Whoever associates partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and does not seek forgiveness and they've died in that condition, there's no hope for them. Allah says, I won't forgive that sin. I will forgive all other sins, but not that. If they've died in that condition without repenting, there's no hope for them. But if they have repented, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all forgiveness. Inna al-Islam ma qablah. When you adopt Islam and you submit to Allah, it deletes your past completely. All the evil that may have been done, even if it was shirk, is completely deleted. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then makes mention of another aspect of dhulm and oppression. Allah says, there are some people who have taken gods besides Allah, who love them similar to the love of Allah, similar to the love that they are meant to be loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes people sit in front of a human being with so much respect that they don't even sit like that in front of their own creator. They are being warned. In salah, they will fidget, they will tamper, they will mess, look from side to side. But sitting in front of someone, they will sit with such respect that they are insulting the Creator, telling him indirectly, I respect this man more than I respect you. Allahu Akbar. This happens very subtly. We need to watch out and look out for our deeds. And it happens sometimes to even the best of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Because we need to know there is a fine line between respect and worship. And shaitan wants us to cross that line all the time. There is a very fine line between respect and worship. When it comes to the ulama of this ummah, we will respect them above our heads inshallah. But we will never ever render any act of worship for anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is something that Allah has repeated so many times in clear cut Arabic language in the Quran. He says, if you want to make me angry, then you just associate a partner with me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Really, Allah says, 
أنا أغنى الشركاء عن الشرك من عمل عملا أشرك فيه معي غيري تركته وشركه I do not want that which is associated as partnership with me I am not in need of anything if anyone associates in a deed a partner with me I will leave the deed and them I don't need anything and the partner as well they can all go Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all protection and to grant us understanding then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us another form of oppression which is a very serious oppression in the Quran you will be surprised it is oppression that involves a third party I told you it is very difficult to seek forgiveness for that because when you have committed a sin between you and Allah then Allah is Ghafoorul Rahim, most forgiving, most merciful. So Allah will forgive inshallah with a flash or like a flash. But when you've committed against someone else, that person is not Ghafoorul Rahim. That person is not most forgiving, most merciful. So be very careful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses those who are married. And they don't really want those wives of theirs. So they neither live properly with them, nor do they want to issue the divorce. They want to fix up their wives. Allahu Akbar. So Allah says, be careful, don't hold a woman without you wanting to live with her and you don't even want to divorce her. You want to fix her up. Allah says, that is oppression. You will pay for it. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the hearts of those who are oppressing in that way. But that having been said, any woman who feels really and this must be said the flip side of the coin because we've spoken to certain people who don't want to issue a divorce and they don't want to live with a woman and you ask them why why don't you want to do this you see this verse says that it is oppression they'll tell you no because they have threatened to take the children away from me without me seeing them ever again in that case you are justified not issuing that talaq you are justified if they want to do something un-islamic believe me you are justified they must first come to the party they must come to the Sharia. They must come wholesale to what Islam says. Then you will also adopt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us adoption of the entire Sharia completely. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all form of oppression. Because sometimes one party is guilty of using the Sharia when it suits them. That also is mentioned in the Quran. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that is the great oppression. وَإِذَا دُعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَهُمْ إِذَا فَرِيقٌ مِّنْهُمْ مُعْرِضُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nur, when certain groups are called to the Sharia to judge in their disputes, you find a group from amongst them runs away. They, they don't want to use the Sharia to solve their problems. Allah says, then when they are getting something through the same system of the Sharia, they will be the first to run to the Sharia. So when they are not getting, they will run to the courts of the law. When they are getting, they will come back and say, no, 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 Sharia, Sharia, come, come. And this is why sometimes people, what they do is they go to the courts. And after they fail there, they want to say Sharia, Sharia. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us adoption of the Sharia. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never make us from the oppressors. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those are the ones who are oppressive the ones who want to use this double-edged sword for them and against them may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection so in surah al-baqarah allah speaks about the women folk and allah says addressing the men don't ever hold them hanging in order to harm them or to fix them up because Allah says whoever does that has definitely oppressed may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from oppression then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in many surahs in the Quran in surah al-baqarah there is a verse saying disbelief itself is also oppression those who have disbelieved they are oppressing themselves they are harming themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want to harm them. They themselves are harming themselves. They are oppressing themselves. Then Allah says, the eating of haram wealth, the eating of interest in particular is great oppression. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah 
that the laws of economics in Islam, the monetary laws in the Sharia, are based in, on principles that will neither result in you oppressing someone nor someone else oppressing you. If you eat interest, it is completely prohibited because what interest does, it makes the rich richer and the poor poorer. Those who have money will constantly be getting more and more money and those who don't have money will be enslaved by them. Eating interest and promoting interest is slavery because you are lending somebody money and at the same time, they are poor, they are now working for you forever and ever. They will be paying you back a lot more whether they have a profit or a loss. The Sharia says you're not allowed to do that. You either lend them that money without taking back any extras or you share the deal with them and you take a risk, profit and loss. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us fair people who can help others, not people who can just eat and usurp and this is why interest is completely prohibited whether it is more or less Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says dirham riban this is the blessed mouth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaking he says one small portion one small portion of silver taken as interest is worse than committing adultery with your own mother in one narration it says 36 times Allahu Akbar may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and save us from interest so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا فَأْذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ If you are not going to leave interest, then you should know the Creator Himself and His Messenger are announcing war against you. Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تُبْتُمْ فَلَكُمْ رُؤُوسُ أَمْوَالِكُمْ لَا تَظْلِمُونَ وَلَا تُظْلَمُونَ If you repent, then you are allowed to take back your capital. Neither shall you oppress, nor shall you be oppressed. And this is why if you take a look at the economic crunch that has taken place recently in the globe, it is all connected to interest. Everybody across the globe has a habit at the moment besides the Muslimin who fear Allah. Their houses are not paid for. They are living on tick, really. They borrowed money. Their, their cars are not paid for. The apparatus in their house, machinery and tools not paid for. Every month they are paying. They are so foolish to do that because there is no guarantee you're going to have your job forever. Because there is no guarantee you're going to be sustained tomorrow. When you are striking a deal for a long-term payment, it is as though you now have a guarantee that Allah is going to sustain you. Allahu Akbar. And Allah says, no one knows what they are going to get tomorrow. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. This is why in Islam, we are taught the other way. Adjust yourself to your economic level. Even if you cannot afford what the Joneses have, no problem. You must be smiling with a bicycle and you must not be infatuated by a vehicle that you cannot own. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. If you can only afford to walk, then walk. If you can only afford public transport, that will be the case. If you can only afford your children to go to a public school, no problem. Do not, do not bend the rules of Islam in order to live on a level higher than what the Creator has put you on because that itself is ingratitude. Allah says one day you will pay for that. Why do you want to have a level higher than the Lord has made for you? Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. And this is why if you take a look at the hundreds of trillions of dollars that were taken out of the system, my understanding of it is the interest of the whole globe was just removed from the equation and everyone collapsed. Allahu Akbar. That's all that happened. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. And this is why the Islamic system, the true Islamic system, would never ever result in people failing and flopping because you have true value for money back to the gold and silver may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all an understanding obviously it sounds like a fairy tale to me and you but believe me that is the only solution may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from others who are stealing our money they replaced our coins with papers now they are replacing our papers with little plastic pieces very soon they will replace the plastic pieces with a small chip somewhere in your body as you walk past your bank balance will be deducted may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us it's coming it's no joke they're already trying it as we speak across the globe may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about monetary oppression. Be careful about people. Be careful about oppressing when it comes to wealth. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says a person who believes 
and sees the light and accepts the message thereafter turns away from the message they have also oppressed themselves in a very very big way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah Ala Imran how can Allah guide a person who has disbelieved after they believed and after they said that what Allah has revealed is the truth? Allah won't guide them. Allah says, they are the ones who are oppressors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adds a message for all of us. Whenever the truth comes to you, if you are too arrogant to accept it, you become an oppressor. Whenever the truth comes to you, if you want to deny the message, you are an oppressor. Allah says you are harming yourself. You are sinning against yourself. You are oppressing yourself and it will result in regret. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those who turn away from the signs of Allah after they clearly come to them. When someone recites a verse of the Quran and tells you brother, sister, this is a clear cut verse of the Quran. You are not supposed to be doing this. And you say, look, you know what? I don't accept it. Allahu Akbar. How can you not accept a verse of the Quran? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all acceptance and make us good Muslims. The Quran, the Sunnah, as well as the books of jurisprudence, all of those hold great value in the Sharia. Ah. In fact, the Sharia ah is made up of that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. This is why in Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ ذُكِّرَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِ فَأَعْرَضَ عَنْهَا وَنَسِيَ مَا قَدَّمَتْ يَدَاهِ Who is there who can be a greater oppressor? Who is there who can be committing a bigger sin than the one whom, who is reminded of Allah's message and still turns away from that message, turns away completely? Yes, it is different if you are weak or we are weak. And out of weakness, we admit that this is wrong. Music is haram, for example. If we admit it, subhanallah, there will be room for us to get to that level, inshallah, at one stage. But if we don't want to admit it, we want to deny it, we want to defy it, then naturally we will be promoting it. Subhanallah. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed it, then how are we going to answer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. This is why... A person who admits his sin is far more loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than one who denies and defies. Because the one who denies and defies will then be promoting it. Whereas the one who has admitted the sin will naturally at some stage give it up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us admit number one. And may he help us give up the sins we are engaged in. There are certain people who are now, if I can use the term, halalizing things that are haram. May Allah protect us. They are now making adultery halal they are saying no you can marry and you know you can just pay for a short moment and you know a little period of time prostitution is now being made legal in the name of islam may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and there are people who come out and promote it and they are debating with the verse of the quran and verses to say here's the verse allahu akbar may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never misguide us allah says he uses this quran to guide certain people and he uses the same quran to misguide those who are insincere those who don't want the truth, they will be able to misguide themselves through the same Quran by misunderstanding it. Allah raises with the Quran certain people and He drops certain people with the same Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding and never ever reject us. And Allah says in Surah Al-Ankabut, These are clear-cut signs in the hearts of those who are given knowledge. So those who have knowledge, they know the meanings of these verses. And none shall deny the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala besides the oppressors. So this verse in Surah Al-Ankabut has two messages. The first is, those who understand the verses of Allah are the ulama. Those who have knowledge, they have a deep understanding of the verses. No layman can come and claim to have a deeper understanding than an alim regarding a verse of the Quran. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that denial is only from those who are oppressors, those who are sinful people. If you look at their lives full of sin, then when it comes to the Quran, they want to come and debate with one verse to try and come and to try and promote the vice they are in and justify themselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ever make us from those who are oppressors and may Allah guide those oppressors 
to the right path inshallah may he always make us from those really who have sound knowledge and who can turn to those who have sound knowledge whenever we have questions regarding the sharia and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says there are certain people who lie about allah lying about allah means when a person says allah said this and allah did not say that that is one another is when a person misquotes and misinterprets the verses of allah intentionally allah says that also is huge oppression listen to what allah says in surah al-ankabut Allah says, who is there who is more oppressive than the one who has belied, who has lied against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has twisted the reality, who has really directly told a lie that Allah has said this, or who has twisted the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, and who is there who is more oppressive than the one whom when they are reminded about Allah, they turn away, they twist, they justify, they defy. Allah says, Jahannam is the abode for such disbelievers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never make us from the disbelievers. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, another form of oppression, those who laugh and joke about the signs of Allah, the verses of Allah, those who scoff at the believers, those who want to scoff at those who are trying to be good believers. Allahu Akbar, Allah says, those are oppressors. They are oppressing themselves and they may also be oppressing the others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Allah says, you are not even supposed to be seated with them. If you are sitting with them, you will also be classed as an oppressor. One is oppression by action and the other is oppression by association. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never make us associates of those who are oppressors. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-An'am, وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ الَّذِينَ يَخُوضُونَ فِي آيَاتِنَا فَأَعْرِضْ عَنْهُمْ حَتَّى يَخُوضُوا فِي حَدِيثٍ غَيْرِهِ وَإِمَّا يُنْسِيَنَّكَ الشَّيْطَانُ فَلَا تَقْعُدَ بَعْدَ الذِّكْرَى مَعَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ Whenever you hear people making a mock or scoffing or joking or laughing or jeering at the signs of Allah, the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are pious and so on, don't even sit with them. And if shaitan makes you forget, as soon as you remember, don't sit with those oppressors. Allah calls them oppressors. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says that if you are to remain seated with them, you are definitely oppressive just like them. If you are going to sit with them, you will definitely be counted as from amongst them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good company and good associates inshallah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that who is more oppressive than the one who blocks the houses of Allah from Allah's name being mentioned in it. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ مَنَعَ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يُذْكَرَ فِيهَا اسْمُهُ وَسَعَى فِي خَرَابِهَا أُولَئِكَ مَا أَكَانَ لَهُمْ أَنْ يَدْخُلُوهَا إِلَّا خَائِفِينَ Allah says, who is more oppressive than the one who blocks the houses of Allah, the masajid? from Allah's name being mentioned in it, whether it is salah, whether it is a good word, whether it is a lecture, whether it is a tafsir, whether it is a hadith, whether it is a good Islamic program, whether it is something that is promoting this deen in one way or another, all of that is the dhikr of Allah. It is the remembrance and reminder of Allah. Allah says, who can be more oppressive than the one who stops and blocks the masjid from being used for what it actually is meant to be used for. Allah says those people, whenever they enter those houses of Allah, they will have a fear in their hearts. Allah will instill in them a fear. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says thereafter, لَهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا خِزِي وَلَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ They will have a downfall in this dunya. They will have embarrassment, disgrace in this dunya. Allah says, at some point, sooner or later, Allah disgraces such people. Remember, oppression does not last forever. Oppression is something that is seasonal. It comes and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fixes the oppressor at some stage. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never make us from the oppressors. Then Allah says after that, that the others who oppress are those who fight the prophets. Those who fight the ulama, those who fight those who are ordering and instructing goodness. Allah says that is huge oppression. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an example of those who fought the prophets of Allah. In Surah Ibrahim, Allah says, the threat, 
You know, people threaten the ulama. People threaten the prophets. Allah speaks of how they threaten the prophets of Allah alayhim salam. Allah says, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِرُسُلِهِمْ لَنُخْرِجَنَّكُمْ مِنْ أَرْضِنَا أَوْ لَتَعُودُنَّ فِي مِلَّتِنَا فَأَوْحَى إِلَيْهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ لَنُهْلِكَنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ Those who disbelieved, meaning this action itself constitutes disbelief. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Those who disbelieve, what did they tell the messengers? They threatened them saying, look, we're going to kick you out of our community. We will kick you out of this place. We will fix you up if you are not going to leave what you are calling towards. Come back to our path. Come back to our way. Come under our authority. If you are not going to, if you are really not going to toe the line, we're going to fix you. Wallahi, the scholars of deen as well as the prophets, they will toe the line of Allah. They will not toe the line of any rich man, nor will they toe the, toe the line of any mischief maker, nor will they toe the line of anyone who has authority here in this dunya. They will toe the line of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us scholars and make us students of knowledge, really, who can please Him at all times, inshallah. Amen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter warns us about bad company. We already spoke a little bit about it. Let's make mention of the other verse, a very powerful verse. See how it repeats itself. Allah has used so many words to describe a man who has bad company. If a person who has bad company is an oppressor, you can imagine how oppressive the company itself is. Does that make sense to us? If a person who has bad company is considered an oppressor, they are oppressing themselves, they are harming themselves. They will be regretful themselves. They will be cursing themselves. Then how big a criminal do you think that person who is actually the bad company is? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never make us bad people. And may he never ever make us in the company of those who are bad. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to enter any town, it is reported one of the duas he once made, and he sometimes used to make is, Oh Allah, let us love, let us love the, the pious of this particular city. Let the people of the city love us and let us only love the pious of the city. There is a reason. When the people love us, they will be able to come into good company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But when we love the pious only, we will ensure that we will only be in the company of the good. Subhanallah. What a powerful dua. Habibna ila ahliha wa habib salihi ahliha ilayna. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection inshallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the oppressor on the day of Qiyamah, the one who had bad company. The oppressor on that day will say, Oh, he will be biting his hands and saying, Destruction upon me. I should have taken the good path, the path of the messenger. I shouldn't have had this person as my company and that one as my company and this one as my company. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Don't worry, intentionally I don't point at individuals. I normally point at the wall. Subhanallah. So people shouldn't think I'm saying this one is bad company. I'm pointing at that light there. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us, that those people who follow their whims and fancies and who worship their brain, they are also oppressors. Those who worship their intellect, not everything shall be understood by everybody. Not everything is understood by everybody. In fact, there is nobody who understands absolutely everything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So Allah's word is final. It has the deepest of understandings. If you feel for a moment that there is a mistake in the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that itself is the greatest of oppression. Allah says, how can you worship your own brain? Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Qasas. Who can there be more misguided than the one who first worships his brain before the knowledge. So knowledge comes first, you must make your brain understand it. Your brain doesn't come first, subhanallah. An-naql sahih comes before al-aql salim subhanallah. That which is 
revealed comes before the brain you need to spend a lifetime trying to understand what is said there subhanallah and believe me there are people who have understood those are the intellectuals those are the ones with brains when we understand that the creator who made me the one whom i'm going to return to he has sent an instruction manual as to how to live if you understand that then you are intelligent but a person who has a radio and tells you put aside the book i know what i'm doing then they open where you're supposed to put a cassette and they put a battery allahu akbar they put a battery they tell you i know what i'm doing you say but what's wrong you say no there's wires under here i want to join the wires allahu akbar then they take the ribbon of the cassette and really reel it all out and put it where the battery is supposed to be that is what we are doing sometimes from a spiritual aspect may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding we might laugh at it when we give you a physical example but that example fits sometimes squarely in our spiritual lives when we think we're too clever may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us that who will guide such an oppressive person who will guide a person who worships his brain allah doesn't want people who think they're too clever allah doesn't want people who worship their brains Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says use your brain to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to try and justify yourself in your evil may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the fact that stealing is also a great oppression when a person pinches when they steal when they deceive it is a great oppression Allah says وَالسَّارِقُ وَالسَّارِقَةُ فَقَطَعُوا أَيْدِيَهُمَا جَزَاءً بِمَا كَسَبَا نَكَالًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ فَمَنْ تَابَ مِنْ بَعْدِ ظُلْمِهِ وَأَصْلَحَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَتُوبُ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Allah says, the male and the female who steal, you should amputate their hands, you should cut their hands as a punishment and a deterrent. It is not just a punishment, it is a deterrent. And Allah says, whoever seeks forgiveness after the oppression, Allah will forgive them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all forgiveness for all the different types of sins that we've involved in. I need to pause there for a moment. The non-Muslims and some Muslims, they say the Sharia is barbaric. You know, you cut the hand of a person who steals and you execute an armed robber. It's true. In the Sharia, an armed robber is meant to be executed. That we agree. And the person who has stolen, the hand is meant to be amputated. And if they steal again, subhanallah, the other hand, Allahu Akbar. And if they want to steal again, the feet will come into play. And if they have no feet and no hands, then one wonders what will happen. I don't know if we can cut their mouth. Allahu Akbar. The reality is, it is not as simple as that. We don't just cut hands of anyone who stole anything. The Sharia has no loopholes and it is not barbaric at all. People have intentionally wanted to misunderstand the Sharia by saying, hey, in the Sharia you're stoned to death. And in the Sharia, you know, you're, you're executed. No, that is just one side of the coin. Allahu Akbar. A person needs to have stolen a certain, more than a certain amount. If it's less than a certain amount, then they will be punished in a different way. Amazing. More than a certain amount. Another thing, it needs to have been from a place that is considered as secure for that particular item. So if you have money sticking out of your pocket and someone stole it, we won't cut their hand. No, but we will punish them in a different way. It's your fault as well. It's your fault as well. But if they blew up your safe in order to steal the thousands, now we're talking business, we go to the next level. Then there needs to have been a minimum of two good Muslims as eyewitnesses to have witnessed the crime. Subhanallah. Then subhanallah, that means this person is now stealing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they are very arrogant about that. The fact that they've stolen, they're so happy about it. They're proud about it. And they've stolen as, as a job because they know they've practiced and perfected. No one would have the guts to actually do that. Allahu Akbar. Unless they are perfect. Allah says now they deserve. If they are sane and nothing wrong with them, then they deserve that the hand be amputated. Otherwise, let me inform you of a problem we are facing across the globe. When a culprit is being dealt with lightly, we are promoting that crime. So any country where there is a lot of crime, who is guilty? The law is guilty. Nothing else. Any country where there is a lot of crime, the law is flawed. We cannot promote crime, subhanallah, by being light on the criminals. Allah says a punishment is supposed to be more of a deterrent than a punishment, subhanallah. 
This is why the Sharia says you should stone a person who is married and commits adultery to death. I agree with that and we believe in it, subhanallah. But the conditions are so tough that to this day, there is not a single person in the history of the Sharia that has been stoned to death by four eyewitnesses or after four eyewitnesses have seen them. The only ones whom that may have happened to are those who have confessed and requested for it to happen to them. All the hype in the media is just a joke against Islam, subhanallah. Everything about Nigeria and everything about here and there is everything against Islam. It is virtually impossible to catch a person committing adultery with four good Muslim males who are eyewitnesses in the act to come up and describe that independently to a judge in a justice system where the Sharia is being implemented. It hasn't happened. Subhanallah. It has not. And I challenge and defy anybody who says it has. It has not. Allahu Akbar. If it has happened, it is out of confession. It is out of the person asking for it to happen. And when it comes for confession regarding stoning to death, that confession needs to happen even when the stoning has begun. The person needs to constantly say, yes, I would like this to happen to me. And that does not happen nowadays. It only happened once at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or twice according to some narrations. And that's it. But this is a deterrent more than anything else. It is to deter people to express and explain how severe a crime it is when you are married and you still would like to go out and commit adultery. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So let's understand as Muslims, when people tell us about the Sharia, it is not barbaric. There are no loopholes in the Sharia. The Sharia just wants us to be the best of people, the most pure of people, the most upright of people, and that's it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from oppression. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about, I'm going to quickly move through this, some of these crimes that are considered great oppression. To falsely accuse, to lie, to gossip, to scoff at, to defame, and to call people bad names. All this is considered oppression. You are oppressing people and Allah says, there is nothing we are going to be able to do about it. You will have to sort yourselves out either here in the dunya by seeking forgiveness from one another or in the akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment have mercy on us and really may he not make us from the oppressors. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, a person who hides witness, a person who lies when it comes to bearing witness, that person is also a major, major oppressor. They have cheated and they have deceived. Someone who bears false witness in the courts they have promoted a crime. They are oppressive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ كَتَمَ شَهَادَةً عِنْدَهُ مِنَ اللَّهِ Who is more oppressive than the one who hides, who hides the witness or who hides what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made manifest for them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can bear witness regarding the entire Sharia inshallah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us something very important. Allah says, you see the oppressors, when people are oppressive and when people are sinners, they are all part and parcel of one group. They will protect each other. They will oppress together with each other. They will plan together. They will support each other and they will create a cartel with each other. When a person is a drunkard, he mixes with others who are drunkards. That's oppression. When a person commits adultery and accuses others of committing adultery, he has friends who are exactly the same. His clique, if you look at it, is just like him. May Allah protect us. Or her clique is just like her. So this is why Allah says, In Surah al jathiyah Allah says, These oppressors, these major sinners, are all protectors and supporters and cronies of one another's. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you'll always find them clustering together, helping each other. Cover my back, I cover yours. Scratch mine, I scratch yours. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. And this verse is repeated many times in the Quran, in Surah Al-An'am. Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ نُوَلِّي بَعْضَ الظَّالِمِينَ بَعْضًا بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Because of what they've earned, we make them supporters of one another. We don't want to contaminate that circle by bringing in innocent parties. Rather, we'd remain, we'd keep them in that circle and they will be friends of one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that 
man has been given everything he has desired for. Everything and much more. In fact, Allah says in Surah Ibrahim, that if you are to count the gifts of Allah, you won't manage. If you are to count the gifts of Allah upon you, you won't be able to do that. And Allah says, still, <laughs> Man is extremely sinful. The word zalum is used here. Oppressive against himself and extremely sinful and still highly ungrateful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from those who are ungrateful. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls a certain group of people, oppressors, by name. One of them is Fir'aun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Shu'ara, وَإِذْ نَادَى رَبُّكَ مُوسَىٰ أَنِئْتِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ قَوْمَ فِرْعَوْنَ أَلَا يَتَّقُونَ Allah says, when we called Musa alayhi salam, we instructed him to go to Fir'aun. We instructed him to go to the oppressors. Who were the oppressors? Fir'aun and his people. Won't they be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So imagine Allah has called certain people oppressors and sinners by name. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never do that to us even on the day of judgment. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in many places in the Quran, He says He will not guide those who are oppressive. So if you would like guidance, first stop oppressing. If you want guidance, stop sinning. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can stop. Because Allah says, وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ I'm sure we've heard that verse many times. Allah does not guide those who are oppressive, those who are sinners. Allah says, He doesn't like those who oppress. He says in Surah Al Imran, وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah does not like those who oppress. Then in Surah Al An'am, He says, إِنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِحُ الظَّالِمُونَ Those who oppress, they will never succeed. They will never taste true success, neither in this world nor in the life after death. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He is the one who knows who is oppressive. Wallahu a'lamu bidhalimeen. In Surah Al-An'am, Allah says, Allah knows who are the oppressors. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say this? Let me inform you. There are many reasons. One of them is that sometimes people are oppressed and no one is helping them. No one can do anything about them. Either because the husband is oppressing or sometimes the son or the daughter is oppressing or sometimes the parent is oppressing, sometimes the brother, the sister or the business partner or sometimes there is oppression to the degree that nobody can do anything about it. Take a look at the globe. There are global forces that are oppressing others without anyone on the globe being able to do anything about it. Allah says, we know about it. We will deal with it. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. And this is why, let the oppressor know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us through the lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, اِتَّقِ دَعْوَةَ الْمَظْلُومِ فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ حِجَابٍ You need to fear the dua that is made against you by the one you have oppressed. For definitely there is no barrier between that dua, that prayer and Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the dua of the oppressed person against the oppressor himself or herself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ever make us victim of such duas and never ever make us oppressors. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that this Quran is a means of cure and it is a means of mercy. And at the same time, for those who are oppressive, it is a means of loss. Listen to what Allah says in Surah Al-Isra. وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا We have revealed in this Quran what will bring forth cure for those who believe in it and who read it and what will bring forth mercy for the same. And at the same time, it will only increase the oppressors in loss. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never do that to us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the curse against those who oppress. Even in Surah Nuh, Nuh alayhi salatu was salam made a dua. He says, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, destroy the oppressors. And you know that dua was accepted and everybody was destroyed. Nuh alayhi salam, Noah, may peace be upon him. You know he was in the ark. And that ark, subhanallah, Allah made him prepare it and bring in the animals into it and so on. And then the rest were all drowned because he made a dua, he made a prayer. He says, 
ولا تزيد الظالمين إلا تبارا Oh Allah, destroy all these people who are oppressors, oppressing against themselves or oppressing against others. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them. Then Allah tells us that, look, Allah doesn't oppress. Allah never oppresses. Man oppresses himself. When Allah punishes in the dunya and punishes in the akhirah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is not oppression. Man asked for it. We will never ever serve someone a sentence without them being guilty of it. That's what Allah says. Listen to what he says in Surah Yunus. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَظْلِمُ النَّاسَ شَيْئًا وَلَأَكِنَّ النَّاسَ أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ Allah has never and will never oppress any, anyone, even a small amount. Allah does not oppress at all. But man oppresses himself and men have oppressed themselves by doing wrong and by transgressing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Then Allah says on the day that a, an oppressor will die, he will ask Allah to give him another chance. Ya Allah, I've oppressed. Ya Allah, send me back. I want to do good and come back. Don't these words sound the same? Doesn't it seem like we've heard these words for other criminals also in the recent days when we spoke about it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا رَبَّنَا أَخِّرْنَا إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ نُجِبْ دَعْوَتَكَ وَنَتَّبِعِ الرُّسُلِ The oppressors will say when death comes to them, Ya Allah, give us a little moment. We want to go back quickly and listen to the message of the messengers, Ya Allah. And we want to obey your instruction. Allah says, no, you were the ones who thought you would never die. You were the ones who thought that reckoning was never going to come. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us all in that regard. And Allah says, look, there are three categories of people. They are mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf. Allah says the three categories of people, those who oppress and those, those who oppress and do wrong. That's the first category. Those who tell them not to do it. That's the second category. And those who remain silent, they do nothing about it. That's the third category. Allah says, we will inflict with punishment the oppressors. Who are the oppressors? Allah says, the oppressors are two categories out of those three. Those who did wrong, they are oppressors. And those who kept quiet or sat on the fence or didn't do anything about it, they are oppressors. Allah says, when destruction comes, it will come to two out of three of the groups. The only people who will be saved will be those who were telling them, listen, don't do this. Those who stood up against them and said, listen, this is wrong. You should not be doing this. So Allah says, whenever there is oppression, you need to stand up and do something about it. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ explains it to us in a hadith. He says, you will go out and enjoin that which is good. You will prohibit that which is evil. And you will stop the oppressor from oppression. Because if you don't stop the oppressor from oppression, we will overtake you with a punishment. Then you will make a dua and we won't respond. Allah says, Allahu Akbar. You see why? Someone is oppressing me. No one does anything about it. So I'm oppressed. The next day that oppressor will say, well, I am getting away with this. He'll oppress you. No one will do anything about it because they will think, look, I've got nothing to do with it. I'm out of the picture here. Then they will oppress the third one, the fourth one, until the whole community is oppressed. And Allahu Akbar, the oppressors are promoted. This is why when it starts, you must nip it in the bud. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. If you take a look at the globe, subhanallah, one country attacked, no one does anything about it. What will happen? The next one will go. Then no one will do anything about it. Then what will happen? The third one will go. No one will do anything about it until the oppressor becomes even stronger and those oppressed will be minced into mincemeat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite the ummah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us wake up from the slumber that we are in. Really, we don't know what is happening. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really grant us a deep understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says that he has destroyed complete nations because they were oppressive. Allah says, look in Surah Hud, he is showing us, he says, look at the destruction of the previous people. Allah says, وَكَذَٰلِكَ أَخْذُ رَبِّكَ إِذَا أَخَذَ الْقُرَىٰ وَهِيَ ظَالِمَةً When nations are oppressive, that is how we destroy them, Allah says. Look at those whom we've destroyed. Wallahi, we've seen. We've seen people being destroyed in our midst. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all.
And we've seen nations go, cities being flooded. We've seen so much earthquakes and volcanoes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. Amen. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that we always need to make a dua. Always need to ask Allah to protect us from all angles of oppression. One is, Ya Allah, don't let us be oppressors. That's the most important. The other, as important inshallah, Ya Allah, never ever make the oppressors oppress us. The third dua, Ya Allah, never allow the oppressors to be victorious above us. Let's listen to these duas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Qasas, Rabbi najjini min al zalimin Dua made by Moses, may peace be upon him, Musa alayhi salam. Oh Allah, protect me from those who are oppressors. Then in Surah Al-A'raf, Allah says, Rabbana la taj'alna ma'al qawmi zalimin Oh Allah, don't even make us with those who are oppressors. Don't make us oppressors. Don't even let us associate with them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Mu'minun, Rabbi fala taj'alni fil qawmi zalimin Allahu Akbar. Allah says, Oh Allah, don't make us from amongst those who are oppressors. And in another place he says, Ya Allah, لا تجعلنا فتنة Allah says, He says, Don't make us pray. Pray as in P-R-E-Y. Don't make us victims of those who are oppressors. Amin. Wallahi, it is a powerful dua. Sometimes people don't realize oppression has different sizes and shapes and different methods. And people are sometimes oppressed even in their workplaces. Even on the streets when they walk, sometimes they are oppressed by the scoffing and laughing at others. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever does that definitely will be taken to task by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why now we come to something very important. When a person has oppressed or done wrong, both types of wrong, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. He says, if you are to turn, he will forgive you. He will forgive you wholesale. Listen to what he says in Surah An-Nisa. He says, وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا أَوْ يَظْلِمْ نَفْسَهُ ثُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرِ اللَّهَ يَجِدِ اللَّهَ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Whoever does a bad deed or whoever has oppressed themselves, if they seek forgiveness, they will find Allah to be very forgiving, very merciful. Subhanallah. Straight, clear-cut verse. Allah says, you've done wrong, just admit it. Seek forgiveness between you and your creator. One time you raise your hands like a beggar. You see, we as Muslims, we are taught to raise our hands like beggars. When we say beggars, we actually put our hands out like we are asking for something. We don't close our hand. We put it like we are asking for something. And we say, oh Allah, I have wronged. Forgive me. I am sincere. I will not do it again. The minute you've said that, your past is deleted or that sin is completely gone. It's deleted. There is no need to now let it bog you and to worry you. No, you are pure. Allahu Akbar. That's how we do it. Allahu Akbar. We say, oh my creator, oh you who have created me, who has created me, I seek your forgiveness. You whom I'm going to return to, have mercy upon me the day I return to you, ya Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds and he responds immediately. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that on the day of Qiyamah, on the day of judgment, the oppressor will want to give a compensation of anything and everything. And Allah says it's not going to help that person. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ghafir that an oppressor on the day of judgment will come with so many excuses and Allah will call out or a caller will call out or it will be made known to them. On that day, the excuse of the oppressor or the wrongdoer will not help him at all. It will be too late. And Allah says, against them is a curse and they will have a very bad abode. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from them. Today we have looked into the angles from which the Quran has discussed the issue of oppression and sin. And really there are so many angles, every aspect is covered in the Quran. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us guidance and mercy. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaha.